find the sense. We can blend two jobs together by, into one by arming our pilots. We don't need air marshals when there's already armed pilots. The negative has ref not refused this point. And secondly, there is no real difference between an air marshal and pilots. As my partner said, the air of difference or air is obviously the same between an air marshal and a highly trained pilot that goes through the exact same rigorous test. Furthermore, you can realize that CNN recorded that many pilots in today's commercial zone actually have military backgrounds, thus already ensuring that the job goes to a highly qualified professional. Air marshals will basically cost taxpayers more and airline companies $1 billion. This can be eliminated if we just blend the two jobs together by hiring air marshals, by not hiring air marshals, and by arming our pilots. Third and most important, perhaps, though, is the negative knows that there's only one air marshal per flight. But on average, there are three pilots. Three pilots or one air marshal. Which one would you rather have armed, knowing, as a paying customer? Obviously, you'd rather have three people defending the plane than one person defending the plane. Secondly, history itself is our most reliable source. And Israel has proven to us, through 35 years of experience, that they do not need to arm their, that they do not need air marshals. They do not have air marshals, regardless of what the negative team says. And what they do is they arm their pilots, which obviously solves the problem at hand. In conclusion, referred to my first speech, which said that army pilots will deter terrorism forever even occurring, thus solving the problem altogether. Our very own pilots demand that we must arm them. Please vote in favor of the historical evidence and supporting our pilots and stopping terrorism by arming our pilots. Everybody ready? Yeah. Josh left you today by saying, please vote in favor of history and don't vote on hypotheticals. But if we're really not going to vote today on whether or not it, it, a hypothetical situation would be carried through, which side is the evidence on? Our opponents repeatedly cite El Al in Israel, the world's safest airline. And, and granted, we, we do not have the, the piece of evidence that says that Israel has air marshals. But aside from that fact, it's not disputed that Israel has armed flight attendants, and it's not disputed that Israel has reinforced their doors. So the pilots don't have to open the door for there to be a gunfight. The pilots don't have to even open their door if, if the, the flight attendants lose the gunfight, because the pilots are secure, they can land the plane, they can stop it. And if the terrorists cannot gain control of the plane in Israel, then they're not going to hijack planes, because there's no point. There's no point to shooting people on airlines when you have to go through security systems and risk getting caught beforehand, when if shooting people is your goal, you could just go to the street and do it, which is exactly what they do in Israel, allowing law enforcement officers on the state and local level to take control of the situation, which is where, where we have an advantage against the terrorists to begin with. So why can't we in the United States repeat the same process? Don't put the guns in the cockpit where the door has to be opened. Put the guns in the cabin where the terrorists are. Put the guns in the hands of people who know how to use them, and put the guns where they can make a difference, in addition to reinforcing the door so that the pilots don't have to, to open the door. The terrorists cannot gain control of the plane, and, and the situation will be resolved peacefully. Um, I wanted to then claim that, that there's only one air marshal per flight versus three pilots. I would contend if you get three untrained people, or three people who have vague training, or three people who are trained in fucking else guns, they're not going to be near as effective as somebody who has one one person who is trained extensively on how to use this gun very, very well, like an air marshal. An air marshal with a clip that held, say, 15 bullets can take out nine terrorists faster than a pilot, or three pilots who have that many bullets. That's just 15 bullets that those pilots might end up pumping into other passengers or vital systems. What we don't want to do is put the passengers in danger, and that is exactly what the affirmative team advocates. It's dangerous to give untrained people guns. It's dangerous to give guns to people who have some military background, but, but not a whole lot, how, how many years ago. It's dangerous to put people in that situation, and that's not what we want to do. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Reed, this is specifically directed towards you. Uh, throughout your speech, you keep contending that pilots will be untrained, but how many times did you hear us say throughout the speech that the affirmative advocates training the pilots just as well as we train the air marshals? How would, untra how would a trained pilot be different in this scenario? So would you, would you train pilots, all, all the pilots at once? Mm -hmm. would, you, would you just take all the pilots out 
of the, the airline industry and train them all at once. Obviously not, Mr. Reed. You train them the exact same way you train the air marshals. Which would take between one and two years to do. So are you going to rotate them out and say half or three quarters of the planes are unsafe for that one to two year span? Or are you just going to train the sky marshals, sky marshals and put them on as quickly as you can? So you're saying you would rather have uh, all of the sky marshals be placed in uh, two years or no, four years, five years down the road than opposed to having shifts of pilots who are well trained and ready to go right. and ready to are you are you are you assuming that the average of three pilots are going to stand up and all three of them are going to walk out of the cockpit, press the uh, autopilot button, and all three of them are going to shoot down the terrorists? Well, I would think they would try to defend their own lives, obviously, so they would. I mean, but if you have reinforced doors, why would you need We already that? have reinforcements. That's so, we well, have them before September 11th. And since September 11th, how many hijackings have there been? Mr. 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 Kovnitsky, my question again is the fact that you, you talk your entire <laughs> speech about, you talk your entire speech, nor did you answer the first one. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you talk your entire speech about saving American lives. But here you talk about reinforced doors. If the air marshal loses the gunfight, it's all right. The pilots still, can still land the plane. plane. Well, aren't all the passengers been slaughtered in that closed area? But if we have air marshals, why do you need uh, armed pilots? Because those air marshals can that easily subdue the terrorists that are in the cabin. Exactly. Once again, but however, you again talk about how you we stretch out America. However, don't you stretch out America by costing billions of dollars to the airline industry that doesn't have to fund these air marshals to tra- wait, hold on, to train the air marshals as well as then fund them to hire them when we can do it. There's only 1,000 air marshals ready to be put on flights today. Right. We first of all, that first step towards uh, putting air marshals on every flight has already been made. Now, if you want to increase the uh, billions of dollars to put more air marshals on flights, it's going to just be uh, that, you know, that small amount of money to put there. However, if you had, if you spend billions of dollars to retrain pilots to not only fly planes but also to do terrorists with guns, then you're going to be wasting that money because pilots are only going to begin shooting once the cockpit doors break. Right, but no, you said that no. there's only, you said it can take us five years to train on the pilots, but we only have 1,000 ready, capable air marshals. So, so we're going to have to train more. See, okay, so we're going to you're saying all the good ideas take that. It will take even longer to train the pilots because your first, will take your first to shift pilots. of pilots, if you're giving them equal training, your first shift of pilots won't be done with training for four or five years. But the That's first shift of the air marshals won't be done for but five or six years. All, all of the air marshals will be done in four or five years. But say you do a quarter of the pilots at a time, then you will have a 20-year span that you're training pilots as opposed to a five-year span for air marshals. Okay, say okay, say we do this. However, let's look at this. Would it be easier? You, you completely forget the fact that the airline industry is about to die out because after September 11th, they have absolutely no money. Who is going to be spending eighty billion dollars? Let me finish the question. Are you aware of the government stimulus package that has been uh, put towards the airline industry? Hasn't has it already been spent? Exactly. Why if wouldn't they, they have money? Wouldn't, wouldn't, they wouldn't have it. Do you have any idea of the state of the economy and what it is right now? Did you know that the government spent eighty billion billion dollars last year? training pilots and giving them guns and allowing them to defend a plane that they already control. You see, by, by giving air marshals the right to kill on the plane and the right to destroy terrorism, A, first of all, not only do you get rid of that pilot sense of control of the airline, the pilot controls the airline and controls the environment. If you give them the gun, it still allows them to control the environment and thus uh, exit from the cockpit and uh, shoot down the terrorists. Uh, Mr. Kozminski said in the, cro- in the crossfire that uh, they would just sit in their cockpit and let everyone die. Well, I disagree. There is communication between the cockpit and the cabin. The pilot would leave the cockpit, one or two, leaving one to still fly the plane and attack the terrorists and destroy the terrorists. The threat that is there, we can solve by simply arming pilots. Not only does that save the government and save the airline industry money, but it allows the pilot to keep the sense of control and keep safety on the plane. Judge, you must vote an affirmation of the resolution and arm pilots because it's cheaper and more effective than simply giving guns to people who have never been on the plane before. Thank you. Uh, put additional training towards those commercial pilots. It is worth more money and is worth more to put air marshals on every flight. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Tyler's last speech when he told you the difference comes down to $1 billion. However, $1 billion is worth nothing. If you look back to the Grand Crossfire where Paul made the point that we spent $80 billion overseas uh, with military funding last year, why can't we just spend one more billion uh, with domestic issues, especially on this. Now, that is exactly true. Plus, this government just spent $157 billion in uh, deficit spending. So, it, obviously, deficit spending has nothing because the economy is still, uh, in fact, on the balance, as many economists believe. So, therefore, uh, government deficit spending has no effect on the economy whatsoever, and the government can, in fact, do that uh, and still survive also. It's like combining a gun with a butter knife. If you're trying to butter your bread with your gun, you might shoot your hand off. But the fact is, you cannot put both military training and pilot training